You getting old. But there is this apprehension about the future. Because we don't know what's going to happen, we're scared to face the future. You see, we have, but the Bible tells us that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You see, people fear the unknown. Because people fear the future, they won't do things that they should have done. Um, some people won't buy a house. They say, well, if I buy a house, that means that, you know, I, I might get laid off and I might lose my job, you know, uh, uh, I might get sick, so I'm not going to buy a house. Saints, you cannot let fear stifle your life. You cannot let fear dictate to what you're going to do. You see, do what you can do and put the rest of it in the hands of the Lord. No, you have not traveled this way before, but the Lord has already traveled that way. You see, the Lord is already, he's already down the road waiting for us. He said, y'all just come on down here. The Lord is already in the future. The Lord has already blessed us in the future, and now he's waiting for us to come on down. You see, we just got to have the faith now. But I know we, 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 we want it mapped out for us, though. Well, Lord, show me this thing. Say, you got to have faith. People fear the future. Franklin Delano Roosevelt made a statement that, that has been quoted down to the years. He said, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Now, to a certain degree, uh, I agree with that. Because fear can imprison you. Fear can paralyze you. Fear can, can dictate to you what you are, ought to be doing or ought not to be doing. But there are two kinds of fear now. There is a healthy fear... And then there is an unhealthy fear. You see, this healthy fear is called the fear of God. You see, people today say, well, I don't fear God. Can I, can I say something? And don't get offended by say, when I say this, but any person who doesn't fear God says that person is a fool. Come on now. Well, why do you say that, Michael? Well, the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? Now, if I fear the Lord, that means I'm a wise person, right? Now, if I don't fear the Lord, what does that mean? Help me out, saints, now. See, so, so, so there is this healthy fear, which is the fear of the Lord. This, this, this fear means that I am in awe of the Lord. That means that I show reverence to the Lord. You see, you would never hear me call a... I try not to call a man reverend. And I tell people, don't call me reverend. Ah, what's up, Red? I said, no, don't call me that. I said, if you have to, just call me Mike, but don't call me reverend. You see, when you revere somebody, when you show reverence to somebody, that means you are in awe of that person. And I don't know any man that I am that in awe of, all right? So I won't call him reverend. I'll call him brother or, or, or elder or pastor. So this kind of fear is a healthy fear that fear of the Lord. That's what Solomon said now. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. He said now, this is the bottom line. He said, this is the nitty and the gritty here. He said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. Keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. This is a healthy fear. But now, there is an unhealthy fear. And psychologists have put a name to this fear. They've called them phobias. Brother Wilson and myself, we suffer from aerophobia. What is aerophobia? That's the fear of flying. There are those who suffer. Well, Martin Luther King was on a talk show. I saw a film clip of this. and He had a fear of flying. And Martin Luther King said, look, it's not that I'm not a man of faith, but I communicate better with God down here on the ground, you know. So those who have aerophobia have a fear of flying. There are those who suffer from sinophobia. Now, if you have sinophobia, you can't be a meter reader or a, or a utility worker that works outside. Sinophobics have a fear of dogs.
Then there are those who suffer from hydrophobia. Hydrophobia means that they have a fear of water. Now, let me be honest, saints. If it's 90 degrees outside and they got a fear of water, I don't think I'm going to be around them, saints. Because that means that they, they haven't taken a shower or a bath. You know, I, I feel sorry for them. Don't get me wrong. But a person who has hydrophobia has a fear of water. A person who has pyrophobia, they have a fear of dogs. I, I'm sorry, a fear of fire. Acrophobia, a fear of heights. Agoraphobia, a fear of open spaces. Claustrophobia, a fear of confined places. Zoophobia is a fear of animals. Then there's a person who suffers from mysophobia. Mysophobia is a person who feels compelled to clean all the time. Every waking hour of his life, they have to clean. Mysophobics are people who wash their hands every, every day, every hour of the day, every minute of the day. You see, these fears are unhealthy fears. Now, I can appreciate the person who has mysophobia as, a person, as opposed to the person who doesn't like to clean or as opposed to the person who doesn't like to wash his hands. Now, there's a name for that person. You can pick it out yourself, though, you know. But there's also those who, who fear the future. Now, they did not come up with a name for this. But those who fear the future are scared. They, they hate to see a new day coming. They just hate getting up in the morning. But you know what, saints? I'm so glad to wake up every morning. You see, saints, I don't have to fear the future. You see, God has already made a way for me in the future. Again, that songwriter said that many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow. And I know who holds my hand. Joshua said that now we have not traveled this way before. You see, the songwriter said the times are filled with swift transitions. Not on earth we move should stand. He said to build your hopes on things eternal. He said to hold to God's unchanging hand. You see, saints, you and I don't know what waits for us down the road, but the Lord knows. When Turner was born, they told us, they said, they said look, he won't be able to walk. They said he won't be able to talk. They said he won't be able to feed himself. They said, they said now when he gets to the age of three or four, they said you're going to have to put him in a home because you won't be able to take care of him. As much as I respect the doctors, yes, I respect the doctors because God gave them the gift. But see, they couldn't see down the road now. You see, while the, doc, while the doctors were saying that he wouldn't walk and he wouldn't talk and he wouldn't feed himself, the Lord was already down here making a way for turn. You see, I don't have to fear the future. Why? Because God is in the future waiting for me. You see, God has already traveled this road. You see, so I have to walk this road by faith, trusting that God is going to take care of me in the future. You see, God had not changed, saints. The same God that took care of Abraham. The same God that took care of Isaac. The same God that took care of Jacob. It's the same God who's going to take care of me today. See, he took care of me yesterday. He's taking care of me today. And he's going to take care of me in the future. Oh, I like what David said on one of case. He said, I once was young. He said, but now I'm old. But he said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor their seed begging bread. You see, I don't have to worry about my children. If I put my children in the hands of the Lord, God is going to take care of them down the road. Sure, I like to live forever and, and, and be with my children, but I know that if God decides to take me home, God's going to take care of them, saints. You see, God had changed. The same God who took care of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is going to take care of us too. The Bible said that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. You see, God is already in the future making provisions for you. Or there are some people who say, well, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know how I'm going to make it. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do next month. 
But the Bible said now, if he took care of the birds, and since we are greater than the birds, don't you think God's going to take care of us? You see, don't let the future handcuff you. Don't let the future stop you from living. Put your faith and put your trust in God. Joshua said, no, ye have not traveled this way before, but I want you to know that God is going to take care of you, saints. There was this man. He was walking through the desert and it was pitch black. And um, as he was walking, he fell down this ravine. So what he did on the way down, he grabbed hold of this bush. And I mean, he was holding on for dear life. Well, he can only hold on for so long. And the story goes that the man let go of the bush and the man fell. But you see, the man only fell one inch. You see, we're looking at the future now. Well, let me back up a little bit. We've been faced with situations in the future. We said this is going to be so bad, and when we got there, it wasn't as bad as we thought it was. Why? Because while you were worried about it, God was in the future taking care of the problem. You see, that songwriter said now, while we're trying to figure it out, the Lord has already worked it out. No, you have not traveled this way before, but the Lord has, saints. This man held onto that bush for dear life. He didn't want to let go, but when he let go of the bush, he just fell one inch. Tell you what you got to do when it comes to the future. You just got to let go and let God. Stop holding on that bush. Oh, Lord, I'm worried about this. You let God take care of it. Do what you can do and let God take care of the rest of it. See, you do your best and God will take care of the rest. People are saying to me, oh, Mike, you know.